Right now, we want to talk a little bit more about this, bringing in our friend Tracy Walder, who is a former FBI agent. Uh, Tracy, we've seen the deadly attacks on grocery stores uh, like this one in Bend, Oregon. There was the horrific shooting in Buffalo, New York earlier this year. Uh, but what is it that grocery stores of all places can do to change their security measures? Yeah, so that's a great question, Adrian. You know, just five days ago, we have to remember that the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI issued a bulletin um, that the, they were concerned about an uptick in potential copycats um, to the Buffalo shooting. The Buffalo shooter distributed his manifesto, um, and that had gotten out there, and they were they were concerned about that. And you know, like you said, grocery stores are what we call soft ta targets. Obviously, they're very vulnerable. Um, they're not, you know, these military hardened targets. And this sounds hopeless. There's not much that obviously can be done other than perhaps putting security, more security cameras outside and more security cameras inside, unless we want to harden um, all of these soft targets, which is incredibly expensive. Why would the FBI issue that bulletin, do you think? I mean, from your experience uh, with the, the agency, is there a particular reason? Is that manifesto circulating more widely? So that's probably the case. Typically what I saw when bulletins like these were released, typically what we saw is what we call an increase in chatter. And that chatter then, what that really translates to is an increase in online activity. So perhaps that manifesto is being more widely distributed, perhaps on some of these I would say white nationalist chat rooms, um, which is where the manifesto was really distributed, we're seeing an uptick uh, in activity, in chatter. Have we heard anything about the suspect in this particular case? When you mention a group like that, uh, it, it suffice it to say you, your curiosity is piqued, thinking what was the motive of this particular shooter? Sure, I, I truly don't know the motive yet. I need to, you know, see more information as that comes out um, to really know whether or not that, you know, this is a copycat. Obviously, we know the Buffalo shooter and his manifesto was based in really white supremacy. And so I'd be interested to know um, sort of what the motive was here um, behind this shooter. Yeah, it would be different, especially because Bend, Oregon and its demographics completely different than Buffalo, New York and its demographics. Uh, one more question for you. A lot of times in these cases, cases uh, we see AR style weapons used. Uh, is there, I mean, the, the, the sheer carnage after somebody uses a weapon like this in, of all places, a grocery store is just, again, horrifying. You know, so in AR-15, the reason that they are used so much in sort of these mass casualty type attacks of attacks is that really they are efficient. So, you know, when I served in Afghanistan or overseas in war zones, I carried really a fully automatic version of that. It is a military style weapon. And the reality is, is if you are shot with it, you most likely will die versus being shot with a handgun. And a lot of times those are more survivable wounds. And so that's why a lot of times these are used in these types of attacks to inflict really the maximum that. All right, Tracy Walder, I, I wish we had some upside uh, to this story to share with our viewers, but certainly stay vigilant. And no matter where you are, in your grocery store, unfortunately, you have to watch your back. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.